Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. We're going to talk about 5G as a military weapon, the Green New World Order, and a fascinating article on the Chernobyl meltdown and nuclear radiation worldwide. We've got a lot to get into today, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. Shout out to Exo Matrix TV. What's up, man? Um, Stop5g.net um, for uh, those who want to get a little background on this. But we're going to get right into uh, what prompted this video. I've had a bunch of stuff um, on the back burner I've been meaning to get to. We're going to get right into that. Uh, but before we do, I want to remind everybody everything you're seeing is open source, free of charge. Um, I only ask that you support my work on patreon.com slash climate viewer or a one-time donation at PayPal or GoFundMe. I greatly appreciate that. And uh, thank you to everybody who's donated so far. I didn't have to do a donation drive to keep the servers going this year. Um, so shout out to Patreon for making that possible and all the people who have supported me. And please remember to uh, hit the like button, uh, comment if you're not watching this live later on. And uh, be sure to subscribe to both my channels. Um, there's going to be some new content on the user slash climate viewer channel coming up. And uh, let's get into it. So uh, I was over here on Facebook and I saw this post today. And I saw this photo and immediately I knew what it was. But apparently other people didn't. And even the original poster um, didn't have a lot of information on it as you can see. They're like, uh, you know, what is this and what's the purpose? Um, and, you know, I wanted to give some uh, background on it. So let's get into that. Uh, what I did was, you know, basically make a Facebook post. And of course, I posted all the information you're about to see on the po both of these posts so that they could see it as well. Um, because most people don't know about this technology. So when you say 5G is a weapon, um, this is from 2014, and it's called the Active Denial System. All of this is over on my article on climateviewer.com, which you can read. All the links are already in the details. Um, called Directed Energy Weapons 101, Sonic, Microwave, and Non-Lethal Warfare. And I got a lot of information on this page to go through. Um, and I'm not going to go through it all. You guys can check all this stuff out. Uh, but in particular, what we're talking about on here is this section right here. This is called the Active Denial System. So this is pretty much a 5G transmitter, millimeter wave transmitter uh, mounted on top of a Humvee. And where did I get this uh, information from? Well, if you go on down here, it's a pretty lengthy article. Um, I have a whole list of different ones. But this is where we really get these photos from. Uh, the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate, JNLWD. Non-lethal weapons, okay? So these are referred to as non-lethal weapons, although with the proper power, um, these could easily be weaponized to kill people um, but anyway right there we have the active denial system uh, ADS 1 and 2 and you can see that the idea is to cook people it's a people cooker um, no joke so uh, let's go down here to the actual photo that she had on Facebook and I'm gonna scroll past you know lasers steering the ailerons of uh, planes to this one the Compact Active Denial Technologies, or ADT. This is the actual photo that you see right here. And uh, you can see that this is the military diagram for it. And uh, right here, it's counter personnel, intended target, deny in access into our area for individuals, individuals through an area, and suppress individuals. Um, the idea is to cook people and it's supposed to be a uh, concept, force protection, crowd control, patrols, convoys, and other defensive and offensive operations, capability effect, heat sensation, causing involuntary movement away from the beam. So it, 
this this article um jet 88 in com is saying sound waves too yes i talk about sonic and infrasonic weapons also in this article it says sonic microwave laser non-lethal warfare um so sonic effects are towards the end of the article it is a very lengthy um but here's the new improved one solid state active denial technology and instead of anyway we won't go into all that um, but if you want to read all of the information about how it's weaponized, um, you can see that. So we're going to jump right into a video showing you all of this straight from the military. DOD's active denial technology and future solid state active denial technology system will produce a focused beam of directed energy to provide our troops a non-lethal option to stop deter and turn back suspicious individuals with minimal risk of injury. Active denial technology is designed to protect the innocent, minimize fatalities, and limit collateral damage across the range of military operations. Active denial technology uses radio frequency millimeter waves at a frequency of 95 gigahertz, traveling 95 gigahertz millimeter wave. 5G, baby. At the speed of light, the millimeter wave directed energy engages the subject, penetrating the skin to a depth of only about 1 64th of an inch. The beam produces an intolerable heating sensation, compelling the targeted individual to instinctively move. For the military, active denial technology can be used for both force application and force protection missions. Now, I want you to notice that they said that it only uh, penetrates the skin up to a 64th of an inch, 95 gigahertz. The lower the frequency, the deeper the penetration of the microwave effect. So just keep that in mind. Um, 5G can be anywhere from 20 gigahertz up to 95 gigahertz. But these millimeter waves typically should be, you know, dermal, you know, um, as they're saying here, at certain power levels. Um, but we won't get into the, the, the deeper details of tissue damage and DNA destruction. We're just going to listen to what the military has to say about this and let them finish the video. Control, perimeter security patrol and convoy protection, and other defensive and offensive operations from both fixed site or mobile platforms. While the active denial system advanced concept technology demonstration succeeded in demonstrating a large scale version of active denial technology, a smaller scale, more mobile version is being and there is the actual photo 3d recreation of what you just saw in my slideshow so you know i'm not bullshitting you and i i immediately recognized the image um just trying to sp spread the truth out there developed by the u.s army and the dod's non-lethal weapons program utilizing solid state technology this system will demonstrate and prove out the critical technologies for a follow-on tactical system which will be an adjunct system that can be installed on a range of tactical or support vehicles. It will have an azimuth drive for full 360 degree coverage, e-steering and azimuth for fine steering control and full e-steering and elevation. With an invisible beam, speed of light targeting and silent operation, it can be used in a wide range of operations such as enhanced combat mobility in dense urban areas where it quickly and safely moves civilians obstructing vehicle mobility. Or it can be used to safely deter unarmed but suspicious civilians observing U.S. forces. At entry control points. That looked like it hurt. I mean, that guy didn't just like... Forces. I mean, that, that dude just like fell out. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> or it can be used to safely deter unarmed but suspicious civilians observing U.S. forces. Ow, a heart! At entry control points, it provides an additional layer of response for dealing with potentially threatening targets and potential crowd violence. It can be quickly de-escalated by targeting the leader, 
or if necessary by panning across the and there is the actual photo uh boy you know having a memory is a good thing this is from 2014 there uh is the source of the image damn i nailed it anyway back to the video the entire crowd while armed individuals mixed in a crowd can be engaged without risk to surrounding civilians since the beam can penetrate window glass it can also be used for non-lethal engagement of suspicious vehicles potentially threatening u.s forces the SSADT will be a lightweight, non-kinetic, non-lethal anti-personnel system providing an alternative to lethal force. And there you see it right there, jnlwp.defense.gov, DOD non-lethal weapons program. So uh, the JNLWD... Uh, that's what that is. I shared this over to my homeboys at a microwave planet also on Facebook. If you guys are into this sort of thing, obviously check out stop5g.net. And, uh, you know, um, if you're on Facebook, this was in Alana Freeland's Under an Eye and Eye Sky. Alana Freeland's a good friend of mine. Um, and yeah, I remembered that picture immediately and i honestly had never seen this video before today <laughs> which is kind of ironic um but anyway yeah i covered all of that in this article as well as you know um if you guys don't know about uh another type of directed energy weapon let me see if i've got my directed energy weapon here uh in, in sight oh my goodness there it is ocular interruption with green freaking laser beams um i am now firing a directed energy weapon at your fias um if you mount one of these suckers on uh on a you know your handgun or whatever you literally could just hit them with the laser beam in the eyeballs and they don't want to screw with you after that but green lasers very effective directed energy weapons try it you'll like it um the military is using them anyway so uh let's go down here and i'll just end with this green lasers continued moving all the way down past all of these different green laser setups to blind people um taser weapons light and bolt tasers uh acoustic loud um e-loud the system for uh knocking out people underwater uh just there it is e-loud um, but I just, great day I put a lot into this. The sonic weapons, the sonic attacks in China and Cuba, how sound can be a weapon to the person who was mentioning it earlier in chat. Yes, I cover that as well. What we now know is possible sonic attacks in Cuba and now in China. Computer scientists may have solved the mystery behind sonic attacks in Cuba and sonic weapon health effects, acoustic trauma, bio effects of sound. Um, and this one, acoustic weapon sources, propagation effects of strong sound, infrasound, um, what it does, uh, how it affects the body, riot control, British use in Northern Ireland. Damn. I mean, just mean stuff. Infrasound, what it can do to the body, uh, discomfort or disorientation, nausea, vomiting, incremental effect from discomfort to death. Blunt object trauma, <laughs> selectable from non-lethal to lethal weapons. That's your 10 hertz weapons. And finally, it ends with a story called The Sonic Weapon of Vladimir Gavro. And uh, this one's pretty nasty. I'm going to go down here and show you just something that's really scary as hell. The findings of Dr. Gavro in the infrasonic range between 1 and 10 cycles per second or 1 to 10 hertz are truly shocking. Lethal infrasonic pitch lies at 7 cycle range. Small amplitude increases affect human behavior in this pitch range. Intellectual activity is first inhibited, blocked, and then destroyed. As the amplitude is increased, several disconcerting responses are noted. These responses begin as complete neurological interference. The action of the medulla is physiologically blocked. Its autonomic 
autonomic either one function cease so the medulla oblongata um, in the back of the brain it you know regulates your breathing your heart all of that sort of thing seven hertz infrasound can shut your heart down shut down your breathing shut down your brain so yes all these weapons are real um read the article let's move along so we're going to hop now to geoengineering i've covered this frequently in a couple articles playing god geoengineering uh, and geoengineering governance this was a pretty lengthy one um, i'm not going to read it to you you guys need to catch up on all of the the goings on of this at the moment do so links are in the uh uh, details already I will put all this into an article later on um, and I followed that up with an even longer one called uh, about the UN geoengineering governance blocked by US and Saudi Arabia unattainable goals from agenda 21 the Paris Accord agenda 2030 and the Green New Deal lead to calls for geoengineering yet nobody is in charge of governing this dangerous technology and this is a slide from one of the presentations I did, um, which I'll show you in just a moment. So I also have a video about this on YouTube. All of these articles, if you go right here to the top and you click play, it'll play the latest video that I did. Just so you know, that's not just a picture. Uh, click play, watch the video. All the links are underneath. After I did that video, there was an update. Several UN officials die in plane crash, plane crash en route to UN Environmental Program Geoengineering Governance Meeting. Uh, that was a coincidence, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, the, the Boeing 737 um, in Nairobi, Kenya, um, you know, somebody dropped this link to me in the details of the video I made that is linked up above. Thank you to that person. And uh, strong coincidence there. Regardless, over at the Harvard Solar Geoengineering Research Program, very lengthy article, Perspectives on the UNEA Resolution. This is fascinating as F to me. Um, I'm not going to read it to you. It is very long. But it really gives several different perspectives on the current battle over who's going to be the one to write the laws for geoengineering governance. And that's where I, you know, put in my presentation, the climate changes and water wars, technocracy, geoengineering, and replacing the water cycle. This image that you see at the top here, um, basically, this is from my presentation right here. And you can see the actual PowerPoint right here. And I go through, you know, what is technocracy? What is this all about? Um, you know, and how it relates to geoengineering and the new world order and the, replacing the water cycle. So pretty much near the, the back end of this thing, um, I talk about weather modification and there's the slide on geoengineering public acceptance. And it goes like this. First, you do accidental geoengineering with ship tracks and planes. So what we're all seeing in the skies and over the oceans, that's an accident. That's accidental geoengineering. Next, we have geoengineering governance, which they're fighting over left and right right now. Um, it's not working out so well. Uh, please put it in the links. I'd love to read. Everything is already linked in the details of this video, um, Love Pugs. So the links are already provided in the details for the video you're watching now, and all of this will be compiled into an article later. Um, so geoengineering governance, that's where we're at right now. They're trying to figure out how to pay for the dead people. You know, who's going to write the laws? Who's going to pay for the dead people? Field experiment. Step three, David Keyes, um, trying to do what's called scope X right now or dimming the sun or solar geoengineering. It's an experiment to spray chemicals in the sky to see how much sunlight is reflected how much they could potentially cool the planet um, it's also known as the strato cruiser i've got a lengthy article on that as well on climate viewer you can read all about david Keyes' field experiment and then finally 
legal global deployment of geoengineering. Hopefully that will not happen in my lifetime. It is my passion to make sure that doesn't happen. And that's why on the side of every single page of climateviewer.com, you will see the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. In fact, you will see over my shoulder right here, the actual um, presentation I took to the Weather Modification Conference last year, where I talked to geoengineering and weather modification scientists and got them to agree to, that this is a needed thing. So that's a big deal. Um, that's what I'm pushing towards. So anyway, um, and also see geoengineering and breaking the water cycle. It's another video I did. So what does this all have to do with the New World Order? Well, a guy I met um, named Alex Newman had this to say. Love to. Uh, it took place in Nairobi, Kenya, just last week, actually, um, early to mid-March. And uh, it was actually a really big deal. I, I literally didn't see a single word about it in the American media, not one word. But uh, they came up with some really drastic agreements and declarations and resolutions. And uh, they're using language now that, it, you know, if, if we had used this language a couple of years ago to say this is what they're doing, uh, the establishment media would have said, oh, you guys are conspiracy theorists, you're kooks, you're just making stuff up. And here, if, if you actually read the things that they're saying, uh, would they say that? I don't know. You tell me, uh, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, they would call you a conspiracy theorist, Alex. Uh, in fact, they've tagged the video New World Order on Wikipedia, and it's all about how it's a big freaking conspiracy. But please continue. Saying they're calling for, quote, a new world order. Uh, this is the head of the UN Environment Agency calling for what she described as a new world order. And then uh, you had another one of these senior bureaucrats and you had heads of state there. You had uh, Emmanuel Macron, the unpopular, politically toxic president of France was there. They said they're, they're building this new world order to transform the way we live. And so under the guise of saving us from humans, under the guise of saving us from allegedly man-made global warming, uh, they want to completely restructure our lives, completely restructure our civilizations, take a bunch of our money and uh, restrict our freedoms in unprecedented ways. So it's really dangerous territory. And what's even more dangerous is that nobody in America even knows this is happening, Sheila. Ain't that the truth, Alex? So that the title of that video, UN Environmental Agency Calls for New World Order, Alex Newman. This is on Rebel Media um, YouTube channel. Um, pretty epic stuff. So um, I met Alex Newman. Here's the actual article. Top headline, UN Environmental Assembly promotes big step towards a new world order. Um, and then the other link is right here. So I met Alex uh, Newman in person when uh, G. Edward Griffin invited me to speak at Global Warming and Inconvenient Lie. Um, you can actually purchase the entire DVD set, which has... Pretty much everybody on the stage, except for me, uh, had a PhD. So I was a little overwhelmed when I went there. But, um, you know, I met Alex Newman and a hell of a guy, um, along with, uh, you know, Lord Moncton uh, and a whole bunch of other people. Um, really, really fascinating stuff. Had my mind blown multiple times, things that even I had never heard um about how this is all about totalitarian control of your life through communitarian law through these mega city projects um what the word sustainable really means anything with sustainable or smart in it that sort of thing so we go on to the next topic right here this is my actual presentation from that geoengineering weather modification and weaponizing nature and this is the speech that I gave at um, that conference. So if you really want a good you know, backgrounder on the entire topic of geoengineering and weather modification, this will really you know, take you through it all, um, you know, through the entire history of weather modification. Um, there's actually 83 slides in this. And I mean, I go through it all. And you can watch the, my presentation in the video at the top. And, you know, just amazing stuff. Um, the entire audience had their mouth wide the freak open uh, while I was going through this stuff. But, you know, you get down towards the end and we actually get into, you know, HARP 
and you know mobile harps on boats and geoengineering you know what is geoengineering all the different terms for geoengineering and blocking sunlight um, you know all the different terminology they like to use uh, but geoengineering obviously being the most popular on Google Scholar so we'll stick with that um, and you know how all of this relates and who's the names and faces and all behind this so if you really want to get a good primer on geoengineering and all of the real details behind all of this this is the most important part geoengineering will kill people and that's what geoengineering governance is all about is paying the dead people so they want to figure out exactly how they're gonna you know deal with the dead people and by the way geoengineering uh, was banned at the convention for biological diversity in 2012 but the United States didn't sign that either oh by the way they also blocked um, the most recent attempt to govern geoengineering because it would have called for a full reporting of what geoengineering research and activities are currently going on. Um, yeah, so there's that. So UN Summit seeks new world order to transform the way we live. Links are in the details. Read the article. Uh, this was written by Alex Newman. And right about here, Here's the quote of the day, uh, right here. We are delighted. All right, let me make sure this is the right one. We are delighted that the world has responded here in Nairobi with firm commitments to build a future where sustainability will be the overarching objective in everything we do, said UN Environmental Acting Executive Director Joyce Masuya. I think that's how you pronounce it. If countries deliver on all that was agreed here and implement the resolutions, we could take a big step towards a new world order where we no longer grow at the expense of nature, but instead see people and planet thrive together. A green new world order. That's her idea. Um, and you can't just make this stuff up. So there you go, straight out of the horse. Oh, well, I'm not going to call her a horse, but straight out of Joyce's mouth. Um, and, you know, despite the little placard they've got here on the video saying that the New World Order is just some grand conspiracy, uh, you can go right here to um, my privacy page and read all about it. Um, I also cover this in the Green New Deal Agenda 2030 Technocracy and Geoengineering. But if you go to uh, the top of the page and you click on Privacy, you can scroll down here to the New World Order Technocrats in the Surveillance State. What is the New World Order and who all is involved in this? And then actually see the entire timeline, which starts with, you guessed it, the Council on Foreign Relations moving on down through the list of the four freedoms and how the United Nations was formed and um, the new world, post new war, uh, post war new world map or the Gomberg map, you know, the entire history of the new world moral order. They just took the word moral out and uh, people saying things like, once having joined the one world federated government, no nation could secede or revolt because with the atom bomb in its possession, the federal government of the world would blow that nation off the face of the earth. And that was said by James P. Warburg, who used to be a Council of Foreign Relations guy and founded the United World Federalists. Right there. Probably never heard of them. Probably should. He also said, Milton Mayer said, we must haul down the American flag, haul it down, stamp on it, and spit on it. And you can currently see the far left of the Democrat Party and the socialist movement to achieve permanent peace through universal disarmament enforced by law, aka take your guns because you don't need them. The United Nations will protect you. Um... Anyway, so read all about the underlying, uh, you know, pushers of the New World Order. We shall have a world government, whether, you, whether or not you like it, by conquest or consent. And the list just goes on and on. And, of course, Henry Kissinger, 
basically, you know, telling everybody exactly what the, the plan is with global warming. Today, Americans would be outraged if UN troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow, they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there was an outside threat from beyond, whether real or promulgated. Promulgated means made the F up and threatened our very existence, like AOC saying we're all going to die in 12 years, or the entire Democrat Party currently. Um, it is then that all peoples of the world would plead with their world leaders to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished to, for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by their world government. So there you go. Not a conspiracy. God, I hate this stuff. But, hey, let's move along. So I'm going to go to the next slide here. Where are we? Let's talk about nuclear because this UN geoengineering stuff is really getting me upset. Um, this is an epic article sent to me by Douglas Dahl. Appreciate you sending me this one because it made my day. Chernobyl's disastrous cover-up is a warning for the next nuclear age. And... Any of you who followed my work already know that I've talked a lot about uh, the weather modification as it related to the Chernobyl reactor meltdown. In 1986, the Soviet Ministry of Hydrometeorology, Yuri Israel. Whoa! Now this is a part of the story I didn't know. Two things I didn't know learned today from this article. But I'd already been covering this for quite some time had a regrettable decision to make. It was his job to track radioactivity blowing from the smoking Chernobyl reactor in the hours after the 26th April explosion and deal with it. 48 hours after the accident, an assistant handed him a roughly drawn map on it, an arrow shot northeast from the nuclear power plant and broadened to become a river of air 10 miles wide that was surging across Belarus towards Russia. If the slow-moving mass of radioactive clouds reached Moscow, where a spring storm front was piling up, millions could be harmed. Israel's decision was easy to was easy. Make it rain. Link right there in the details. Um, so that day in Moscow, in a Moscow airport. Technicians loaded artillery shells with silver iodide. Soviet Air Force pilots climbed into their cockpits of their Tu-16 bombers and made an easy one-hour flight to Chernobyl where the reactor burned. The pilots circled following the weather. They flew 30, 70, 100, and 200 kilometers chasing the inky black billows of radioactive waste. When they caught up with the cloud, they shot jets of silver iodide into it to emancipate the rain. In the sleepy towns of southern Belarus, villagers looked up to see planes with strange yellow and gray contrails snaking across the sky. What an interesting word to use, contrails. Strange yellow and gray contrails snaking across the sky. Next day, 27 April, powerful winds kicked up. Cumulus clouds billowed in on the horizon and rain poured down in a deluge. The raindrops scavenged radioactive dust floating 200 meters in the air and sent it to the ground. The pilots trailed the slow-moving gaseous bulk of nuclear waste northeast beyond Gomel into Mogilev province where pilots shot silver iodide. Rain fell along with a toxic brew of a dozen radioactive elements if operation cyclone we have a name for it now i'm gonna to have to put that on weathermodificationhistory.com if operation cyclone had not been top secret the headline would have been spectacular scientists using advanced technology save russian cities from technological disaster yet as the old saying goes what goes up must come down no one told the Belarusians that Belarusians that southern half of the Republican had been sacrificed to protect Russian cities. 
In the path of the artificially induced rain lived several hundred thousand Belarusians ignorant of the contaminants around them. Now this article goes on to talk about a lot of things. It talks about Chernobyl. It talks about, um, uh, wow, brain fart. Um, Sellafield in the UK. This is a photo from the UK. Um, or actually this is from the Chernobyl accident, excuse me. But it talks about um, the UK accident at Sellafield and all of the nuclear um, explosions that happened, over 2,000 nuclear bombs, um, and how that ended up in Minnesota wheat that was 2,500 kilometers away from the Nevada test range. Um, so this radioactive waste that's getting, been getting dumped everywhere, uh, pretty serious topic. So, interestingly enough, I've covered this on uh, weathermodificationhistory.com. Russian cloud seeding prevents Chernobyl's radioactive rains reaching Moscow. Um, links are in the details. Read all about it. Drop it in chat for you real quick. Um, and you can read all about that. I've got several different sources on this at the bottom here where you can read about that. And you can see uh, some photos that I have. This is where the Chernobyl meltdown occurred. This is where they did the cloud seeding. Oh, by the way, when they said it was headed towards Russia, they mean it was headed towards Moscow. So most people don't know that there's actually two big radioactive chunks. And I always wondered, you know, for quite some time, you know, I made this map of the Chernobyl meltdown, you know, probably in 2010. And at the time, I had no clue why there was this other big radioactive mess here when the Chernobyl reactor is down here. Um, so then I, you know, of course, found out the, the whole story behind this. And that explains why all of these people got, you know, literally peed on. Um, they did weather modification to rain all of that out here. So it did not reach Moscow here. It's practically criminal. You're correct. And this is, you know, the actual um, straight from Wikipedia version of where all the radiation is. So that's what, that's what I based my 3D model I created off of. Um, so there you go. And uh, all right, so let's move to the next one. So interestingly enough, this article mentioned Yuri Israel. And I didn't know that Yuri Israel had anything to do with this either. That would have been really interesting to know. Um, because right over here on the sidebar, you can see this. Russian Geoengineering Solar Radiation Management Field Experiment. Guess who it's by? Yuri Israel. Field Experiments on Studying Solar Radiation Passing Through Aerosol Layers. Um, so basically, Yuri Israel also did a geoengineering experiment. And this is what it looked like. That's a Russian military hind helicopter spraying out chemtrails. Uh, and this is a uh, Tu-65 uh, ground-based cloud-making machine also doing the same. And what did they do with that? They wanted to see how it, you know, aerosols pass through layers. So you can see the flight patterns right here for the helicopter. And you can see the, you know, aerosol generator right here. And you can see that they basically had a photometer or a sunlight meter uh, right here to see how much sunlight they were blocking with these chemtrails. So Yuri Israel, Russian scientist, not only did he cause the Chernobyl radioactive rainfall experiments, he also did geoengineering studies. Something you learn new every day. Once again, thank you to Daw for showing me that. Um, I never would have linked the two together. Going to have to update my post on weather modification history with all this new information. Because it's just too damn cool. So if you come over to Climate Viewer 3D, you can actually see that in 3D, like I said. And this is the radioactive fallout from the Chernobyl meltdown. And this is from my article uh, also on climateviewer.com. 10 most radioactive locations on Earth. If you want to see the details on that, you can just come over here and see that map by itself and go to the article. Links in the details. Um, 
And there's the article, 10 Most Radioactive Places on Earth, mapped out from November 2013. Uh, but anyway, back to the map. So, well, what do we have here? They also mentioned Sellafield. This is Sellafield, for those who don't know about it. It's right here. Um, there's actually a pipe, this yellow line right here. This is the other Fukushima you never heard about. It's been leaking radioactive waste into the Irish Sea uh, for so long uh, that, you know, it's amazing that most people don't know about this. But uh, Sellafield had, you know, some problems. <laughs> and uh, there's the uh, nuclear reactor right over here, uh, Calder Hall. Uh, can you guys, y'all probably can't see that. Calder Hall nuclear power site. These are one of the early uh, nuclear sites from the 50s. Um, but basically, this is the, the radioactive waste outlet pipe that goes into the ocean. And that is uh, basically what's in the picture uh, here. You know, I've come for your children. And it says Irish Sea. Um, and that's the radioactive waste that's going into there. Yeah, Sellafield is uh, Fukushima in the 50s. So anyway... Uh, back to the map. So what's so important about this whole Chernobyl thing? One other little factoid you might not know about. And I'll show you this. And you can see like as you look through this. Um, basically like these are all the radioactive places. The Somali coast. Uh, where the mafia dumped radioactive waste into the ocean. Um, you know nuclear testing sites and all of that. But basically let me come down here and turn this off for a second so you can see. This is the Chernobyl meltdown. Here's the Chernobyl reactor. Okay. Here's a photo of it when it blew up. As you can see, that's a big hole. All right. What you may not know is that less than five miles away is the Duga 3, also known as the Russian woodpecker. And the Russian woodpecker was accused of weather modification over the United States. Is ELF able to manipulate the weather? Have has a technology has a technique devised by Tesla permitted the Soviets to alter the world's weather? And this is from Popular Communications magazine. Um, talking about 1984 when we had severe weather and a El Nino that showed up out of nowhere. And then two years later, the Chernobyl reactor blew up, which in turn permanently shut down the Duga 3 reactor. Not a coincidence in my book. I don't think so. So fascinating stuff indeed. Learn all about it. And of course, we've got all the nuclear um, explosions on the map. This is the Nevada nuclear explosions that we were talking about just a moment ago. As you can see, there are 2,615 nuclear explosions mapped out on climateviewer.com. And you can actually see the holes in the ground still if you'd like to. And how many of these were above ground? I need to get rid of the lettering on that. That's hella annoying. Some of these were above ground. And, you know, obviously some of these were in the upper atmosphere, like Starfish Prime, Operation Fishbowl. That's way up in there, as you can see. Um, so all of the nuclear explosions of the world all mapped out as well. And, you know, the Russians did it too. They basically blew up the North Pole way up here. Lots and lots of nuclear fallout. So our, you know, at least my parents, your grandparents possibly, um, they were breathing a whole lot of radiation. That radiation blew worldwide. And, you know, to this day, we don't know the full effects. And that's what the article is about. It's about all of these three things. The Fukushima meltdown that occurred. Um, and, you know, let me turn that off, turn that back on. And you can see the Fukushima meltdown right here in 3D. So this is how much radiation is on the ground. And I got a whole bunch in the ocean. But regardless, nuclear radiation, nuclear power, not green, very deadly. If it blows up, it's not just your local neighborhood that's going to, you know, be, you know, shat upon. It's going to be blown worldwide. 
So let's keep that in, in mind whenever we talk about green energy. So let's end on um, some upcoming events. This one uh, from the United Arab Emirates Research Program on Rainfall Enhancement Science. They're going to pre be presenting at the, U at the EGU or the European Geophysical Union. It's like the American Geophysical Union, but for Europe. In Vienna, Austria on April 7th through 12th, 2019. And the thing that caught my eye, I'm not going to read you any of this except for this part right here. They're going to have a program called The Nexus Between Weather Modification and Limited Area Geoengineering. I would love to have a front row seat to that. Um, I made the argument to uh, Ken Caldera quite some time ago in 2012 that the only difference between geoengineering and weather modification is a word. Because geoengineering will cause weather modification on a worldwide basis. And at the weather modification conference that I attended, geoengineering scientists were presenting. They're one and the same. One is just on a much larger scale. So this is coming up soon. Um, hopefully we can get some video of this because I'd sure love to be a fly on the wall there. Uh, so the nexus between weather modification and limited area geoengineering. And we'll finish with one last, uh, you know, uh, upcoming event. Uh, my friend, Ilana Freeland and, uh, Clifford Carnicom will be presenting at the, uh, a, they're going to have a presentation called geoengineering and bio geo bioengineering, the unmistakable link. Saturday, April 27th, and Sunday, April 28th at the Santa Fe Women's Club. Um, if you want to get more information on that, links are in the details. Uh, you know, I've been a longtime friend of Alana Freeland. I've never spoken to Clifford Carnicom, but if you want to, you know, get some, you know, pretty crazy information, I'm sure this will be one you'd like to see. So if you're in the area, uh, make it out there and tell them I sent you. So uh, links in the details for the event uh, right there. And that's in Santa Fe, New Mexico, April 27th and 28th. Um, check it out. So, uh, all right. Well, I think we've covered everything. I did have that at the end of the list for some reason. So let's just drop that out of there. But you've uh, now seen some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, we, we made it all the way through that. And uh, so 5G is a military weapon. The Green New World Order, Chernobyl meltdown and rain uh, weather modification related to uh, geoengineering field experiment done by Yuri Israel. Uh, the UAE Rainfall Enhancement Program is going to have a talk coming up about the nexus between weather modification and limited area geoengineering, whatever the hell that means. Um, and you know, Alana Friedland's got a, you know, and Clifford Carnicom have a thing coming up. So you're up to date and, uh, that's the point of climate viewer news, keep you up to date on all things climate related, the real agenda behind climate change. Um, not the one that they push in the media. Um, I hope to continue to keep snatching your people up. So please, you know, like, and subscribe. Um, I really appreciate everybody that supports, you know, uh, my efforts. Um, check out the 10 technologies that are used to own the weather today. Uh, get familiar with them. You know, knowing is half the battle. Uh, support the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. It's at climateviewer.com slash nmod. Um, may need a little bit of revising because I really do hate the United Nations. But at the same time, uh, geoengineering is a worldwide problem. I'm, you know, at a loss for words right now as to how we're going to deal with this. But, you know, we got to start somewhere. And I say we start with transparency and accountability. So let's do that. Um, and of course, you know, your support is always greatly appreciated. Uh, and you can do that at patreon.com slash climate viewer or a one-time donation on PayPal or GoFundMe. I always greatly appreciate that. So 
guys, I love you, mean it. Um, I've been kind of sick for the last week, so that's why I haven't put out a video lately. And I'm feeling much better today. So I had to catch you guys up on all the stuff I've been bookmarking. And that's why these videos usually tend to be about an hour, because there's a lot of stuff to go through, and I barely even scratched the surface. Um, but you now know, and knowing is half the battle, with information comes power, and with power comes great responsibility. So all I ask is that you use this information free of charge, open source, you know, give a link back to where you got it um, from, to attack ideas, not people. Love you, mean it. Kids are impressionable. That's why here at this station, we watch the programs and commercials your child watches carefully. He may see bad guys, but not in the role of heroes. And he'll learn that crime doesn't pay. Because your child's welfare is our concern, too. That's part of our code. Better than anything you can get without a prescription. Anything. It's the best.